welcome to the first video on the channel of the new game Moonbreaker. This game lets you collect miniatures and use them in tactical RPG style combat in both PvP and PvE. The big twist of this game and the reason that I'm extremely interested in it is that you can actually collect these miniatures and then paint them yourselves. So this will be a quick little guide of how to get started painting uh, during this early access window that we are currently in. Which things may change of course because this is an early access game but if you're interested in painting miniatures right now you can on this early preview window. So in this main menu here you go over to collect and paint and it will pop up an entire list of the miniatures that are in the game. All of these are already painted for you in the game but if you're interested in the game you're probably interested in the fact that you would like to paint your own at some point. Well it's very interesting how this game actually works. I want to show you how you can actually paint some of these miniatures yourself. So for an example let's use the amplifier bitol as a unit. You can click on the unit it'll tell you his gameplay, you can read a little bit of lore on it, and then you can hit paint in the bottom right. It'll pop to this menu. This menu will show you the default scheme as it says at the top of the screen and show you how this miniature looks. You can left click to drag around the miniature. You can middle mouse button click, uh, middle mouse button scroll to push in, or middle mouse button click to move the miniature around to the left or right of the screen. Then if you'd like to move your camera above or below the unit, you can right click on the screen. So these little instructions will be at the bottom here for telling you how to actually control this and it's really easy to use and you'll get a quick hang of it and you can really zoom into whatever you want whenever you want very easily and it makes uh, painting a very quick and easy um, actual mechanic of this game. So if you want to get to painting once you're in this menu at the top here this says the default scheme you have two buttons duplicate the scheme or hit new scheme. So new scheme will put a blank scheme and you can see now all of the paint was removed from this character and it looks like an unpainted miniature that you would buy from a hobby store for say War Machine or Warhammer or any other miniature game. So there's a lot of different options once you get into this menu it can be a little bit overwhelming. Firstly on the left side you have uh, your size of the brush that you're painting, you have on the bottom the opacity of the color. So let's just say, for example, let's pick red and let's max the size out and put full opacity. You'll see we can just make the whole unit red. Well, obviously we don't want to make the whole unit red. What you can do is just undo or control Z and undo your last action. So there are many different options in that sense, but now say you wanted to have a lighter red somewhere. You see how this is a lighter red, not as dark as a comparison to this. So that is the opacity wheel, and this would be the size wheel, which is very fun to play with. Of course, we will undo those. That is when I have paint clicked, and I'm picking different colors. Um, we can get into some other details of wash, dry brush, airbrush, stipple, and decal in a second, but another very interesting portion here is actually the, uh, probably the most interesting actually, is the auto mask. So you can come down here and have a uh, mask put on. And what this does is, let's say we wanted to make a certain piece of this character blue. Let's say we want his armor to be blue. Well, I can start painting blue, and you see how it's not painting parts that I am not clicking. So it's not painting any piece of the model that I am not clicking. Now it might auto categorize, as you see, if we went up his all of his armor as blue, but it's not categorizing everything. So this is kind of showing you which piece of the model is this. It actually really helps you to try to determine what am I actually painting right now? Am I painting uh, his armor? Am I painting skin? It can really help you determine that because you can already see it. And you can follow it down to his legs. Okay, so this armor, and now this is just a guide. You don't have to use it, but it's a guide for, okay, well, what is his armor? And you can go through and see, okay, well, that's supposed to be blue, that's supposed to be blue, okay, and then you can go through and you can see his entire armor. You can paint the whole model that way to see, okay, well, what is like the base piece of that model? And you can do it that way, and that is, once you click the first time, you want to hold that down. So let's undo some of this. So I want to hold that down. Now, if I am unclicking and then I click on this, you see now I'm painting the next portion. So I'll show that again. If I want to paint his stomach here, I'm holding down my left click, painting all of that. But let's say I wanted to make the red... Uh, the other highlighted part red, you can see how I can quickly do that as well this way. So you could easily do a good chunk of the model, say if you wanted to just make him red and blue, and you could turn your brush size all the way up. Make sure to go back to the initial red piece, click and hold, and then you can paint everything 
red that way. Now let's say you say, all right, I want to see what the blue could be. You could quickly go over the model like this. And okay, now I have red and blue armor relatively quickly. I mean, especially compared to when you're painting an actual miniature yourself. You can see now that you have a full-blown uh, armor and you know, extra piece of highlighting pieces of his armor, you know, different pieces perfectly colored out already. So that's all just with paint. That is the mask function. So you can toggle it on and off with this button down here, or you can even just hold, um, I believe, shift as you're going through and just toggle it on and off that way. I like to keep it on a lot. It helps uh, not make mistakes, even though the undo button is super easy to um, use. And also there is the redo button right below. So say you undid that and you're like, oh wait, I actually liked all the blue. You can hit redo and it'll put the blue back on for you. So those are really important tools here. And the only other button on the left side of the screen that I haven't talked to is just toggling the UI. So say at the end, you just want to kind of get the distractions off your screen and really just see what the model looks like. You can hit tab to then go through that aspect of it which is super fun to be able to just actually really look and see okay let's see all the details or take final pictures of the character you still have full zoom control and everything like that in this which is which is awesome over here it gets a lot more complicated so if you're familiar with painting miniatures some of these terms will be very familiar to you if you're not they might be new but it's relatively easy again this is the system is incredible it makes it very very easy so you have different uh words here like dry brush wash airbrush stipple and then decal looks like it's going to be something that's coming in the game later where you can actually like use a sticker type placement and put something on to the character or maybe you unlock it as you play the game i'm not exactly sure yet but that'll be something you can maybe say you want to have like a phoenix icon right here in a stomach you could place that there is what i'm guessing it is um for washing, it's very easy. So washing, we'll try to get the low areas of of armor. So let's see, we have, uh, let's make some easier looking colors so we can actually see what I'm talking about here. So let's say you make his armor white. Okay, so you see his armor is now white. But let's say, eh, let's make it, uh, let's make it green instead. Green's nice. Let's crank the opacity. I'll do the white real quick. All right, so. Oh, I'm on wash. That's why I say that. Make sure you're clicking at the top right of the screen back and forth. So now this will be green. So let's say I wanted to just, not that this would look good, to just show you what washing would do. So I want to wash with red. So I'm going to hold down and I wash. So this just hits the deepest portions of the model. So if you're going to put a wet amount of paint on this model, so like half paint, half water, it would seep to the corners of these pieces. That's what washing does. Uh, and it looks very cool. It changes up the style completely. As you can see, it doesn't even look that there. It looks like a, a burning sun at this point with green and red. But that's what washing will do. Also, you can change the opacity. So say we had that dark. If we want to do very, very light red, say like roughly 10%, you can see it barely has an effect. But it's still there, but barely. As you crank that opacity. So not only is the opacity used for paint but it's also used for washing dry brushing airbrushing etc so that's what um washing will do dry brushing will do the opposite so i'll use this as blue to try to show the difference dry brushing will hit the elevated portions and um, they crank the opacity so we can see it nicely it'll hit the elevated portions of the model and black you'll see it just kind of start to go this will just help you with highlighting so what you're seeing is on these lines here Black is starting to go on that, just to show you that it's a little bit raised compared to the rest of the model. This really helps in the wash, combined with that really helps to give the model some depth. So that's the whole point of washing and dry brushing, and they're again, very easy to use. Now, if you don't have the auto mask function on and you go to do a dry brush, it will do everything. So you're seeing, I am putting a black dry brush all over the model, not just that. So the mask function helps both uh, to keep colors in, but also just to keep like, your detailing into its own thing. So you don't have to play with using really tiny circles just to hit the exact areas you want. Now you can, but this function is really, really good, especially for when you're just trying to get a lot of paint on the model right away. You want to get the colors down. You can do that very easily. Airbrushing is just a totally different technique of painting, and you'll see it'll just look very different. So we'll try this back here. It'll give it a nice look instead of like just dark, and the lighter you go, the better it can be. So you can see how it's like a little bit gray instead of black right away and you can hold it on for longer and you'll just see that it's making it uh, just looks like it's airbrushed. If you never airbrush anything, 
you'll see, I mean, you can easily make uh, something else like full-blown uh, black here in the front, and you'll see it gets really dark color here, but when you airbrush just lightly for a little bit here, you'll see it's just putting on a little bit of paint at a time, so it's just kind of looks like it's uh, placed on there just kind of like through a blower where it's just kind of getting splattered on there a little bit, but not covering the whole thing in a really dark color like I did with the other black there. So that's really cool. Um, and that, uh, I've used airbrushing a little bit so far. I've never actually done it in real life, so I've stayed away. I, I am a true paint, wash, and dry brush guy to get all your highlighting done, and it'll help the easiest. Um, stipple's also another advanced technique, but essentially it'll allow you even additional, um, if I make the brush size the right size, just additional ways to uh, add some highlighting. So you, so you can put these dots here to try to show a little bit of highlighting or gleam on the front of this armor. And you can, really cool thing you can do is look at old model or models that are already colored and try to get inspiration for this to see where you should be stippling and things as well, um, which I'll show you right after this. Now, the last thing you would be looking at over here on the right side is your colors. So these are your mixing colors at the top, but you have, they give you smoke, sun, sea, life. They, they give you a, a few different palettes here and then they let you just customize any more you want. So this bottom right portion with the paintbrush here is literally a mixing board. So say you want to make a nice purple. These will blend like real paint. So this is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on, uh, it doesn't matter if you're on paint or not, when you're down here, you're putting the color down. But when you mix these two colors together, they will blend like actual paint. So you're mixing red and blue, obviously that's going to make purple. And then say, okay, well that purple needs a little bit more of this in it. You could try to put more of that in it, and then you can go from there. And it's pretty cool how you can actually take, all right, I want a little bit of that purple and that blue, and then you can go back and all right, I need a little more red on top, need some blue, and then you can do that and try to get the colors that you want to mix and match anything you want. So now you got to like a lavender, etc. Um, anytime you want to actually pick the same exact color as well, you can use the uh, color picker over here. So say you ended up getting like a really nice color on your model that you like, you can go and pick that color. And this we will tell you like the differences between the colors. So you say, all right, well, I want that. So I'm gonna take this green. You see the, the orb on the left side of your screen will change to go along with that. Um, for down here though, for when you're mixing colors, what you can do is I, you have a whole new palette here that I've started to mix a couple colors myself for another model I was making. You can hit the plus sign and say, okay, I want that purple there. And it'll put it right there. So now I have this baby purple, this lavender color that I can use anytime I want now when I'm painting and that'll save and stay there. So now when I go to paint, you can pick your different colors. Now I can add the purple and let's say I wanted to make uh, his hair purple. I could easily do that with the color that I just made down here by mixing it. Uh, you can organize your uh, palettes like this. You can add more. So you have three empty ones here and you can edit them like this. So if you want to remove the purple, I could easily then just go back to remove, unclick the edit button, add it back in very easily as well. So you see it functions really well, really quickly that you can just change on the fly. Anytime you want to clear down here, you can hit this uh, brush icon in the bottom right of your screen and that will clear the palette, which then you can go back up and start going back to work with trying to mix colors that you want, trying to get a certain uh, green or whatever it is that you're looking for. And then you can you know, keep adding colors and trying to mix. And this I need a good bit of practice with to try to to get good with but you see all the colors will mix that way and you can get new colors just like that and you can use any of the other colors you can reuse the purple that you had and add that into the mix as well very easily and again brush to clear that out i think that's the basics for you guys to start painting in this game it, it's very user friendly um take you half the time it would to paint an actual model uh, which is amazing and you know it's a super fun mechanic that this game has uh, there is no save button on the screen when you you can delete obviously but when you hit the back arrow it will say would you like to save and in that case you can save your miniature uh, and then now this will be the painted miniature which obviously i'll have to go back and fix but as i said i wanted to show you guys what some of the other models did and how they use stippling and some other things. So if you actually just take in this and look at the default scheme that was on this model, you can see these white dots right here. This is stippling to add a little bit of highlighting. So you can see they actually have that on all the blue surfaces. They're using a little bit of airbrushing here. You see it's just a very light color to add a glowing look to the energy of this cannon, which is very interesting. So it's really helpful to go and look at 
some of the models that are already in this game and then you can easily see okay well what should i try to apply to my paints uh the only model that i've actually painted so far fully other than just messing around a bunch has been uh this captain guy I just made him kind of like an ashen uh warrior which is uh, i think turned out pretty decent uh, a lot of work to do still learning all of the the cool tools that you can do in this game but you can see there you can go as crazy as you'd like and you know even in this shoulder pad i colored a little bit by hand in here just to get some extra colors and etc so there's a a lot of room to grow in this game and i uh, can't wait to paint a bunch more hopefully this was helpful for you you can uh, start your painting journey here in moonbreaker the game is super fun to play and i could spend hours and hours painting on this so hope you enjoyed it uh, if you did make sure to subscribe to the channel and check back for next time peace